Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Geeks 2 and today, guys. Welcome back to part two of the Black Dahlia Murders, um, low budget style. Um, so, uh, right now, my ring light is um, it is inaccessible for the moment. Um, so, I do apologize if the lighting's not perfect. Right now, I'm working on overhead lighting and some natural light behind me. Um, and then, of course, I'm not in my typical place that I've been for the last few videos. So, apologize for that. But I wanted to go ahead and get this part two out to you guys as soon as possible. Now this part two of course is a uh, conclusion of the Black Dahlia murder. Last time I really just talked about the murder itself and the investigation into the murder. Today we're going to talk about the aftermath and maybe uh, a little bit of a whodunit, right? We don't really know who did the Black Dahlia murders, nobody was actually ever officially charged or caught, but there is still more that we could talk about with that. So again, thanks to 1v1 for the idea. I think their name changed actually, so I don't know what their name is. Um, I swear it was 1v1 though, but that's who they are. That's their name. Um, this game will be a completion of the Black Dahlia ser uh, series and whatnot, but uh, won't sit around too much. Let's go ahead and jump right into it with the aftermath. So if I didn't mention already, check out part one, link in the description below, but the aftermath of the Black Dahlia murder. So as mentioned um, previously in the other video, Short's murder was a cold case, right? We never figured out who did it, but here are a couple things that uh, kind of occurred after the fact that I feel like are important to note. During the aftermath of the case, many came to criticize the press for compromising the investigation through reports probing of details and unverified reporting. We already talked a little bit about how I think the press had a huge hand in basically how awful, I would say, they treated a short uh, post-mortem and also how they treated the families and uh, victims and other people around the case. And I just think the press had a huge issue with why the case failed. In addition to that, um, in September of 1949, a grand jury actually um, <laughs> convened to discuss the inadequacies of the LAPD's homicide unit. So, of course, the ho homicide unit did, of course, have their own faults here. I'm never one to shy away from, you know, placing the blame on the police, but no, I'm kidding. Um, basically, there were other issues. There were other unsolved murders, um, especially of those of women and children who basically went unsolved with little to no context and or, you know, conclusion. That being said, they basically drug, drug up cases from previous years and boom, trouble, trouble in LA. Um, so basically all that was happened here is that they, they did a deeper dive into stuff like where Short lived, right? Like the grand jury didn't really even accomplish anything because they just started calling people from these other states that they knew. They traced their movements, uh, there being Short's movements uh, between Massachusetts, California, and Florida, and like interviewed people who knew her in Texas and New Orleans, but literally pulled up no new information, none. So this is essentially like a pointless like gesture at this juncture, right? I, I get that they're wanting to bring some kind of action towards the LAPD for you know various inadequacies during the investigation, but what they're doing isn't really offering any form of solution other than, oh, I don't know, just bothering people, essentially. So, yeah, beyond that, um, just a bunch of bu bureaucratic bullshit. Um, there were a... So beyond the bureaucratic bullshit, because this is, this is, I kind of mentioned this last time, but I wanted to talk about it. So something like 413 people, I think, confessed to her murder over time. No, more than that. So during the investigation, the initial investigation of the murder, they had a total of 60 confessions, okay? Most of which were, were men, again, no surprise, uh, before anybody screams, six of them, like, 85% of serial killers are male. Okay, again, I'm sure somebody's going to say it. We don't know if this is a serial killer because it was just one killing, but given given the, the gruesome nature of this murder, I'm going to guess that this person has either done it before or has done it since. Um, yeah. So if I had to bet money, I'd say that's what happened. But they had like 60 people confess to it. I think some of them got charged with like, you know, the same with the people who gave like false like accusations and stuff they basically charged them with obstruction of justice um but uh but i digress so anyways um since then okay 
An additional like 500 people have confessed to the crime, some of whom had not even been born like when Short died. So people who were like born in like the 60s and 70s and after were literally like, oh yeah, I kill, I'm the Black Dahlia murder. Like, I don't even know, bro. Like, what the fuck? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a surprising number. I mean, we're talking about an incredibly violent and gruesome murder and people were just like, yep, it was me. That was me, bro. Um, so with that in mind, there, there are tons of theories and thoughts about, you know, who these people were, who did it, did any of these people actually do the crime? You know, there's lots of stuff that's kind of boiled over in the time since. Uh, ultimately, none of it came into anything. But I now want to talk about who did it. Okay, I don't know who for sure did it, but I have a couple ideas, right? Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few people who are potential suspects, and then I'm going to tell you my thoughts on who probably did it. Um, so, yeah. So, next, let's talk about who did it. So, I'm going to be honest here first and foremost. There were a lot of individuals who were speculated that, you know, in the last, like, 80 years, there have been so many people brought forward as potential suspects um, through, like, potentially related crimes and through re-examination of evidence and this could again be a whole thing of its own like there were when i was researching this there were like i would say dozens of people who had theories uh, about people who did it right right oh this person did it here's how i know they did it so these are just a few of them because there could literally be a whole video about who killed elizabeth shore who was the black dahlia murder it's honestly i would compare it to like the zodiac killer wherein um nobody knew who no, knows who they are and it's a very it's a very high profile murder that happened that we still talk about today so all right so basically here are a couple of things that people have thought that were potentially uh, part of it the murder of Jean french and la um, who was believed by the media to have been connected to short's killing French was discovered in West L.A. on Grandview Boulevard, nude and badly beaten. On her stomach was written in lipsticks what appeared to say, Fuck you, B.D. Um, the letters, uh, text were written below it. Now, a lot of people speculated that B.D. was for a Black Dahlia. But... A lot of people say, including historian John Lewis, that it was actually P.D. for a police department gonna go with that one because uh, i think that somebody probably misinterpreted this and ran with it they're like oh it looks like a b but uh anyhow um and uh, also there are a lot of these that like i would actually pick up and do their own video on this one i intend to do a video on it by itself but the chicago lipstick murders so several crime authors such as Steve Hodell and William Rasmussen have suggested a link between the short murder and the 1946 murder and dismemberment of six-year-old Suzanne Degnan in Chicago, Illinois. So according to the captain of the LAPD, they believed that they were connected. Right? They, they thought that this was true. So among the evidence for this connection, ready, was a piece of circumstantial evidence saying that Short's body was found on Norton Avenue, which was three blocks from Degnan Boulevard, Degnan being the last girl, name of the girl from Chicago. So that's a little on the nose if you ask me, but there were also striking similarities between the handwriting on the Degnan ransom note and the Black Dahlia Avenger, who had sent various letters to newspapers in Los Angeles. However, convicted serial killer William Herons was imprisoned for the lipstick murders. Herons, who again will get his own episode here, while he was. So, <laughs> so the lipstick murderer claims, um, William Heron claims that he was tortured and uh, forced to give a confession. Okay. Now, like, look, I I'm sure a lot of murderers say that, but there is a lot of evidence that says that this is true right so a lot of people think that there is some issues with the validity of his confession the claims of torture are also really well documented by other suspects from around the time and again i'll do a whole video about this because this rabbit hole goes super duper deep but with that in mind the lipstick murders may have been related but it was most likely not the work of william herons so i don't think he personally did it but that's a good theory very interesting connection um but that's getting a video of its own at some other point in time because I was like, holy shit, that's interesting. Um, 
Okay, moving on. In 1991, Janice Knowlton, a woman who was 10 years old at the time of Short's murder, claimed to have witnessed her father, George Knowlton, beat Short to death with a claw hammer in the family's detached garage. She also published a uh, book in 1995 called Daddy Was the Black Dahlia Killer, which, Jesus Christ, sounds like an attempted cash grab if I've ever seen one. But her claims in the book have been disputed by the family, and they're also just not consistent with what we know to be facts about the case. Um, we also have John Gilmore, who wrote a book called uh, Severed, the true story of the Black Dolly murder. Now, I think Severed was a pretty, uh, I think that's a pretty awful name considering the nature of the death, but go figure. He suggested a possible connection between Short's murder and the murder of George F. Bauerdorf, a socialite who was strangled to death in her West Hollywood home in 1944. Um, Gilmore suggests that Short's employment at the Hollywood Canteen, where Bauerdorf also worked, could be a potential connection to them. But the claim that Short ever worked at the Hollywood Canteen has been disputed by many. So, before I tell you who I did, who I think did it, right? Because we're just going to roll right into it. I want to preface this by saying that there are a lot of theories. I gave you like four of them, likely theories or possibilities, but there are a bunch of others. Okay, so I, I didn't cover all of them. These are just the ones that I found the most interesting, or I felt like had the most basis in reality. Right? No one's like it was aliens or something like that. Because uh, I did see that aliens did the Black Dahlia. Um, but uh, anyhow, I have two thoughts on who did it, okay? So, first things first. Several crime authors, as well as the Cleveland detective Peter Merlo, uh, have suspected a link between the short murder and the Cleveland torso murders, which I think I will also do a video of its own, um, which took course in... Uh, Cleveland, Ohio, between 1934 and 1938. As part of their investigations of the murders that took place before and after the short killing, the original LAPD investigator studied the torso murders, but later discounted any relationship between the two cases. But in 1980, new evidence implicating a former torso murder suspect, one Jack Anderson Wilson, also known as Arnold Smith, was investigated by Detective St. John in relation to Schwartz's murder. St. John claimed he was close to arresting Wilson for Short's murder, but that Wilson ended up dying in a fire February 4th, 1982. So the possible connection was also received media attention in the 1992 series uh, Unsolved Mysteries. So Wilson is a promising suspect, but we'll never know because, you know, he died in a fire. But it's possible. But it's also possible he was a false lead. Who knows? I thought that was very interesting, I thought it was very compelling, but it also just seems a little, a little fishy. My other theory, da 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 da, we just don't know. Shit, I don't even know, like, I can't even tell you that, like, you know, like, if I, can, I don't know, like, never know, you know, like. I think this is the more likely theory. Um, honestly, given the amount of media coverage around this case, I think it's more likely that none of the people we think did it actually did it. I think that, honestly, whoever killed Short was probably smarter than a lot of people think, and I also think that they are, in fact, a serial killer that went on to offend again and possibly went into permanent hibernation of sorts. Um, because here's the deal. Given the media attention of this case and the absolute snafu of the LAPD, it is just baffling to me if they were able to catch anybody because here's the deal. They literally had so much coverage on this case. If you watched the television anywhere at any point in time, you would know exactly what was happening during the case. You, If you were smart enough to watch, you would be smart enough to avoid potential police detection. It's as simple as that. So, I think it's unlikely that they were ever ever apprehended or ever found for that matter. So, it is what it is. That's my true theory. I think that the uh, torso murder suspect is promising, but again, they're dead. Uh, I, I, I do think that it just it's, it's going to be an unsolved murder forever because I think the person who did it, it probably continued to murder and more than likely will never be caught because they're either dead or very, very, very old. So anyhow, I'm not going to drone on any longer. This has been a hell of a piece of to research. Um, I've enjoyed researching it. It's been a lot of uh, a lot of fun to uh, dive deeper into this. Of course, with respect, I don't want to any anyone to think that I am trying to be disrespectful in any way, shape, or form towards Elizabeth Short or the family. Of course, this is a horrible tragedy that happened so long ago. 
but honestly it was just a great idea and I'm pretty grateful for 1v1 or whomever they are um, that gave me this idea because it was an interesting case and it felt like something out of a horror movie honestly so much stuff happened in this case and it made me want to it made me want to just continue to investigate. It wanted me to figure out where they failed because there's so much stuff that happened that like I feel like caused the case to fail. And I feel like that's the true tragedy of this is that this was so early on in our history and this was so early on in like the in regards to like homicide investigations and things of that nature. It was just so early on. I feel like we just didn't really have a we didn't really have a way to do things properly and I feel like that's really what caused this cause this investigation to fail you know a lot of investigating has to do with luck but i feel like luck was not on our side anyhow i'm no expert but that's my two cents on this um enough of all of that thank you guys so much for watching i know this is a little bit shorter but i kind of mentioned this before i wanted to break this up into two pieces because quite frankly it's a lot for me to do to film and everything else to put into one video especially since um, given the two portions I think this would have been almost a 30 minute video if not more put together but I appreciate you guys' patience um, my wife had a wonderful birthday last week we actually went out to a uh, local restaurant here called McGuire's um, and we also went to a escape room which was pretty cool uh, we didn't escape right I've done like this is this was my fourth escape room fourth escape room we didn't escape I'm, I'm sad but it is what it is you know what i mean you can't 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 win them all you know um but it should be fun um i appreciate you guys' patience with me and i hope you guys are continuing to watch and if you haven't already go ahead and like and subscribe give us a comment down below about what you want to see covered in future videos uh, i like to i like to cover what you guys ask me to cover because Honestly, it saves me the time and effort of having to come up with ideas. Next week, we'll have another conspiracy theory video, specifically conspiracy theories that I personally believe in. This was offered to me by a, uh, somebody here on YouTube. They said, hey, what theories do you believe in? So I'm going to give you guys my top three that I've covered that I personally do believe in. Um, I have done my favorite theories, but these are theories that I do personally and genuinely believe. So anyhow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay awesome. And we will see you in the next one. See ya.